Wherever you are in this world, whether it's away from home or somewhere, I don't know, you just feel a bit homesick, there's always one thing that's the same. And sometimes in the evening, I like to go outside the balcony and look at the sky, look at the moon, look at the stars. And that piece of sky just feels, just look up there and it feels like at home because I remember watching the moon and sky and stars way from home and uh, you get that glimpse just a little bit glimpse that you are home another thing that's the same uh, wherever you are in the world and that's that's the Omega this is my last video about Omega and I'm not gonna talk to you about this my last Omega video about Omega Speedmaster Professional and this is gonna be a I want it whenever I get a cool watch I really like I want to do some special kind of video something more professional spiffy but that's not me I like I like it just sit in front of the camera and talk about it and wherever you go in the world the moon watch is the same it's the universal recognized watch and uh, today I want to talk to you about my moon watch full review and I don't know, it's not a full review, everyone reviewed the Moon Watch. I just want to talk to you about it. So yeah guys, this is my Moon Watch, the Omega Moon Watch. And uh, first, when I first encountered the Moon Watch in person, uh, I was a bit let down, disappointed, because it's not as shiny and spiffy as I thought it will be, because this is a tool watch, and I come to terms with it two years later, I got one, I purchased one, the exact one I first saw. So this is my first Omega Moon watch I saw, ever saw in person. And this is the one I got. And I made a video about it. I was not that impressed. And uh, I urge everyone before buying it, go to somewhere and try it out. See if you like it, because this watch is not for everyone. And uh, that's why I like it. It's universally loved and recommended chronograph, entry-level chronograph into a really high chronology. I shouldn't say entry-level, but uh, this is a watch that's not a uh, Langenzona datograph, but it's a first best or decent chronograph. It has a tremendous history. It's been up in the moon, uh, the moon and all the story I told you about it, but um, overall how it's been like living with the moon watch and everything uh when you first come to terms with it uh, you know it's a tool watch and i can go now to space with it so that's <laughs> that's really something i have a watch in my collection i can go to space and uh i i many times i said i don't like this watch because uh it's so popular everyone is tooting the same horn and everyone singing praises so in terms of luxury and bling this watch is not it you want to get a aqua terror from omega you want to get the bright wing you want to get something uh i don't know blingy uh but if you want a real proper chronograph that is capable of going up to the space because you like that uh, then you get this one because this is a fight certified by nasa for all manned space missions so yeah it was also the first watch worn on the moon so it, there is history about it and i got this in my collection because i honestly wanted to cross it off the list for so many years for so many years ever since i got into watches and i did and i'm not looking back uh, also in my collection if i would really have to get rid of some watches for something this would be the first one to get because why well, it's easy to sell and uh, i wouldn't miss it as my other watches you know in my collection i have a reverse so and Submariner and some s smaller brand watches but uh this one is uh 
really something I wouldn't miss that much. I'm not saying I'm gonna sell it, but it's easy to understand why so many people buy it, wear it and sell it because it's not for them and um, they decide it's not for them and this watch is not for everyone. This is a watch for genuine watch enthusiasts and I've been, I did a little like a attempt of a comedy because uh, I felt like doing it. Uh, I wore my watch first time because it was quarantine and everything and the first time I wore it outside I was expecting some random bloke who will recognize it and say hey man is that a moon watch well it's not and uh, didn't happen and I tried to make some funny video and uh, of course some of you mentioned oh you should not buy a watch you buy a watch for yourself and whatnot blah 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 but when i get the moon watch i fully expect when i'm wearing it one day because there are not a lot of watch enthusiasts in the world as you may think there is we are small world watch nerds watch geeks and uh, i that's why i like to geek out about watches and this is the last time i geek out about the moon watch uh this is uh the last time i'm making a video hopefully it's the last time and uh yeah it's not for everyone it's manual wound and uh that's why you get it oh i don't like manual wound that's why you get this much because if you're a watch enthusiast you do like manual wound i do i love it uh i would i would make all watches manual wound. sure uh a couple of days i wasn't wearing it it stopped i forgot to wound it but uh also, my automatic watches stopped because I'm not wearing them, and so sometimes I need to wound them. So it's not an argument. It's a this watch manual wound is a great, great tool to weed out, to kick out all the watch guy, all the guys who are not that into watches, who are not so many watch enthusiasts. I've said this many times. Watch guys are boring. Just take a look at, I see an enormous amount of watch channels coming out and most of them are really boring. I don't watch a lot of watch channels, watch, watch reviews. I know why you're watching me, to be honest. But uh, we are watch nerds and we like to sometimes geek out about watches. And uh, I try to make uh, two videos per week or three sometimes, but and I say I'm not gonna talk about the same thing over and over and over but the watch enthusiasts in me I, I get that need sometimes to geek out about watches and uh, frankly there's not a lot of kindred spirits around here or around you so I turn on my camera and I like to geek out about watches with you so this is a fantastic watch it has a crystal has a white crystal it's a plastic crystal it gets scratches i bumped mine into a couple of corners and i got a couple of scratches on crystal but you can buff them out i choose not to un unless it becomes really intolerable but what i like about moon watch is this is not a first watch i would recommend to someone who's new into watches i recommended my friend who just wanted to get some decent watch what i recommended from omega it was Seamaster 300 or the Aquaterra and he picked Seamaster 300 because he wouldn't like this manual wound watch right now. Maybe later when he gets more into watches then it is for him. So even though uh, this watch is so popular and tooted, uh, it's not for everyone and uh, I really love the fact that it's manual wound. It's 1861 movement, uh, 321 caliber was the real deal that went to the space, but coincidentally, in 1969, they came up with the 861, and that was the marketed as a moon watch because of the marketing. And somewhere in the 90s, maybe 96, uh, up until last year, uh, 1861 was the moment for this watch. Now, I got the opportunity to get a uh, sapphire sandwich Omega and I passed on it and uh, knowing this now uh, I wouldn't pass on it because when I had this one I wanted to have a sazzle crystal uh, and this non-see-through case back 
because this is the moon watch but uh, this watch is the movement is not decorated as a Dalrin. that's a plastic chronograph break inside of this moment and I don't like about it uh, they say it's durable but on a sapphire crystal and sapphire sandwich that's a sapphire on top and sapphire on bottom you see a decorated moment and this one's not this is just a do the job kind of moment it will do your job and that's it so uh, do not dismiss sapphire sandwich there are other lots of other variations like first omega in space and lots of other stuff so uh moon watch is for true watch enthusiast uh who already knows about history when you get it you learn about history you fall like an alice in wonder one into deep pit and uh, this watch uh, i find something i learn something every day that uh, is new to it and i truly enjoy wearing it and here i have a bracelet which i haven't shown you before in my reviews and this is a, just a normal bracelet uh, the interesting thing about the links is that the links are from the top and bottom the same which is not the case for for example speedmaster automatic reduced uh, which is a great watch but it's not so great so definitely get a, a professional one it's a great bracelet you can see the end links here and everything is really nice uh, i don't like this watch on the bracelet as much as i like it on the leather band and even though i'm a bracelet guy i would wear every watch on a bracelet but on the, this is a stripe monster and uh, it's a great watch for a watch enthusiast not for someone who's new into watches there are great omega watches Aquaterra is one of the latest watch crushes I had and I almost got an Aquaterra before this one but now that I get I have the moon watch I don't look back at Aquaterra but it's a great piece so yeah that's it uh everything about the watch there is to know it's known uh it has a 42 mil diameter 20 mil lug width looks great on any strap or needle or even on a bracelet it looks good but you just cannot deny the versatility of this watch on the strap so yeah this is my little piece uh, i like it and i uh, just wanted to talk watches with you guys so uh yeah and that's it omega moon watch one of my greatest watch crushes and when I got it it's not my greatest and best watch nor do I love it the best but I definitely do love it enough to keep it in my collection and to have it and it I understand why so many people have it in their collection I also understand why so many people uh, buy it and flip it on a short term but uh, this is a watch to have